Hi everyone, how are you? I am so excited to be live with you guys today. Today we're gonna be talking about tongue ties. We're gonna have an expert here. Her name is Lisa from an Instagram account that is called Tongue Tie Experts. So we're gonna be answering like how to figure out if your baby has a tongue tie, how, what experts can you kind of like approach to get help. We're also gonna be talking about if tongue tie just affects latch or what other things are affected by tongue tie. Um, what to expect from a tongue tie release procedure. We have so many questions that we got from you guys from stories. So many really, really good questions. So I'm gonna bring Lisa in and if you have any questions, if you think that your baby might have a tongue tie, if you're thinking um, who to approach or if you're confused, please start asking your questions and I'm super excited. So I'm gonna bring Quest, how's everyone today? Let me see. I'm accepting it. Hopefully she'll join in one second. Thank you. I love the Mashka Lives every Tuesday. I love them too. You guys, our goal is to share just really valuable information quick coming from the experts so you can make empowered decisions for you and for your baby. So I'm trying to accept the request, but it's not working. Lisa, if you're here, would you mind um, putting a message here and letting me know if um, you're able to request again, because I am trying to accept, but it's not letting me. Hi, Ying from Colorado, how are you? And for you guys that are here, start putting your questions. There's a little question box um, here down below. Uh, Lisa, I'm trying to let you in. I keep putting accept request and it won't let me. Um, it says you're unable to join. Would you mind requesting again? I'm so sorry, you guys. We're just having a little bit of technical difficulties getting Lisa into the live, but we should be able to do it here in a second. Um, let me see Instagram and its technical difficulties, you guys, but um, we're gonna be able to solve this here soon. I hope I request it again, she says. Okay, uh, it's not letting me. It says you're not able to join, but we'll figure it out. Oh, yay, yay. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's not letting me. I'm so sorry, you guys, we're so excited. It's such an important topic and we got so many questions uh, from you guys as well. So I'm just trying to accept, but it won't let me. Oh, yay, yay. This has never happened before. Um, Lisa, is your Instagram um, up to date with all the updates? Because sometimes that's the issue. But hopefully, I keep accepting the request and it just tells me, oh, there you go. Yes. It worked. <laughs> it finally worked. <laughs> Lisa, how are you? It finally worked. Hi. <laughs> oh, no. I was starting to sweat. Like, I'm this like, is what? fair. We're relying on technology. Right? How are you? <laughs> Good. Oh, I am good. so How excited to be talking excited. about this topic Very it's so important at the same time, so confusing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I want to just say, you know, as you were talking about that you were going to have me on today, um, the, the words tongue tie experts, I don't ever want anybody to think like I think I am the tongue tie expert. I had to name it something that would get the attention, you know, but when I talk about tongue tie experts, it's me bringing tongue tie experts to my audience, to my podcast listeners, um, and trying to um, get the real experts who are the parents exactly. who've gone through this, the help they need. So, you know, a little bit of a caveat always. I always get like a little like nervous when I hear, oh, here comes an expert. Yes. Am I experienced? Have I been doing this for many years? Do I know more about this than a lot of people do? Absolutely. That, but I'm I not agree. the only Thank you for clarifying it. I think we should get <laughs> right into it. I was very yeah. surprised when we were asking yesterday on stories, like what questions did everybody have that a lot of people actually ask, what is mm -hmm. tongue tie? So I think that we should get started okay. with that basic and yeah. then we'll go into a little bit of the more complex questions that we got so many. Sure. Yeah, so um, tongue tie is a very, um, unfortunately, controversial subject because there's different okay. definitions of what it is. There's different 
points of view about if it's something that needs to be treated. And we'll talk later about more about what treatment means. And there's also, um, you know, we don't learn about this in school as professionals. So we don't really learn about how tongue tie affects breastfeeding. And then there's different definitions of what actually a tongue tie is. And I go with the definition that I think works the best and gets the best outcomes and has the least um, number of babies getting interventions that don't need it. So tongue tie is the inability to do the functions that your tongue needs to do. So it's having a restrictive function. Yes. It's not what it looks like at all. So if you know, if anybody goes to my, my feed, there's very few pictures of what okay. it looks like in the mouth because you can't really tell by what it looks like. It depends on how it functions. So sometimes it looks like a tongue is very tight, but it does everything right and there's no symptoms. So, so there's nothing to fix. The tongue, like right? the tongue function is not affected, it really doesn't matter. So when it matters is when the tongue function is actually affected. Right. Right. And then we can go deeper and say, well, yes. what do you mean by tongue function? Right. So there are many people who believe that if somebody can stick out their tongue, That's it. their tongue is works well. But actually, when you're talking about feeding, especially breastfeeding, yes. and this affects bottle feeding babies as well, but especially breastfeeding babies, the need to leave the mouth wide open and lift up the tongue with the mouth open is imperative. So if the mm -hmm. tongue, say this is the bottom of the mouth, right? And this is the tongue. If the tongue goes to lift and it's okay. attached, it's going to narrow. Maybe pop off, maybe bite the, you know, make a biting motion on the mom's breast. Maybe not even be able to get mm. on at all to extract milk. So it has to do with can the tongue move up, make peristaltic or wave-like motions, can it go back and forth? Can it do the things it needs to do for whatever function we are at that life stage? So the very beginning, it's feeding, right? Then it gets into, you know, from breastfeeding, bottle feeding into solids. Then it goes into speech. So if, if there's someone listening that's got a, a you know, preschool age child, and maybe yes. they say, well, why would I need to know about this now? You say, well, how's your kid doing now? Right? Is there something your child should be doing with their mouth that they can't? And as we get older, we get into speak, uh, uh, suck, swallow, breathe patterns turn into difficulty breathing through the nose because we could, we could talk too, too deeply into this, but it does affect the way we breathe and our whole function of our face. So I know like to kind of like go a little bit right? deeper into that because I did see a question on that, that it was like, hey, I, I saw two questions that I think are relevant. So one was like, mm -hmm. if, uh, does it just affect latching? Because I feel like when we're talking about tongue ties, like it's something that it's very talked about when the babies are little, right? When they're starting to mm -hmm. either breastfeed or bottle feed. But mm -hmm. you're mentioning now that it can affect even like right. a little bit later. So can we talk a little bit about Yes, latching is yes. one of the things that's affected, but what other things, like, <laughs> if, um, yes, like, what other things can be affected? Yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, my experience and expertise, if you want to call it that, is in infants and, and breastfeeding, and, you know, a little bit young babies bottle feeding, but if things aren't, if if the child compensates and the mother baby get through that young period and there's really an oral restriction that isn't addressed, it's possible that there's going to be difficulty with sw okay. swallowing solids. Because think of all the things yeah. you do, you like move your tongue around your mouth, right? If you can't, if you can't move that bolus of food around in your mouth, or you're air, you're afraid to swallow while you chew, it can cause choking. So some kids get you know, there's some kids who um, are labeled as picky eaters, but it's really the textures of certain foods that really don't feel safe for them. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Right? So it so, can be kind of like yeah. instinct for yeah. them to be like, hey, this doesn't feel safe for me. I'm going to stay yes. away from it. Yes. Yes. And that, that starts uh, with infants. You know, there are some kids that can't, you know, there's a reflex called mm -hmm. suck, swallow, breathe in infancy. And if that's not working right, 
the baby's literally afraid to swallow, afraid to stop breathing to swallow because they, they're supposed to be able to do it together, but that can be out of whack, you know, for, for a few reasons, but it, tongue tie is one of them. Um, the other thing that can happen is babies are starting to say sounds and there's certain sounds that they can't make if their tongue doesn't move in all the ways it's supposed to. Now, that's not saying that every baby who's got a tongue tie is gonna have a feeding or a speech problem. No. no way. And that's not saying that every kid who's got a exactly. feeding or a speech problem has a tongue tie. But it's definitely worth keeping in the back of your mind and getting evaluated for if there's any suspect that any of these things are going on. And then as we get older, and this is why I've become more passionate about this, like I couldn't let it go because it's not just about breastfeeding. We meet, you know, on the other side of my practice, I do yes. functional medicine. I'm a nurse, I'm a, I'm a midwife nurse practitioner, and I work with women's wellness. And I was meeting people who are older, who have sleep mm -hmm. apnea, and, and, and they, they have tongue never tongue. even like, right? Yeah. So, and, right. And, and then we get into why they have they have high blood pressure they're overweight they have hormone imbalances all because they're not sleeping well and maybe that started with the tongue tie so when i start asking questions backwards like did you breastfeed did your mother breastfeed you well did you have any eating disorders do you have any trouble eating did you need speech therapy and it all like goes back and a lot of times there is a restricted tongue that started way in it's it. crazy how all it is connected right and i feel like years ago like now for all of us that are adults <laughs> for example if i were to ask my mom i can pretty much guarantee that she doesn't know what that tongue tie was a possibility or nobody even like talked to her about it so exactly. i bet there's a lot of adults out there that exactly. just went through it and that's it like they just don't even know now or they didn't even know so that's yeah. really really yes. interesting and kind yes. of like going off to this question exactly. that we have that we're, we're responding like yeah it will affect it could affect speech and your ability to talk it could affect it could affect so you know in general what i what i like to say to anybody who has any suspicion as an adult or of their older kids you know a myofunctional therapist is the person that was one of the questions that. Sure. and i i you know a little plug yeah, my um, my podcast that just came out today is all we'll about link that. So the email, we'll link it so everybody types. can podcast. go kind of like listen okay. to it and find Excellent. a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have I have um, episodes on all different age groups, but it just so happens that today's episode is with a Maya functional therapist talking about mm -hmm. her own kids. You know, be because we didn't learn about this in school so many of us come to this work throughout well, experience you know, I, own children, I completely agree you know? and i so, saw this question that i think it's really interesting it's like yeah. how to determine if baby has mild tongue tie versus posterior tongue tie and just hard to see you probably know i read it and I right like, so, so i yeah so i don't like to call a tongue tie mild or whatever if somebody's told their baby has a mild tongue tie it's probably by so it's someone who kind of like either you have tie. it or not it's like being okay right you either can function or you can't right are you pregnant, like being or not? pregnant. <laughs> yeah. you're either pregnant or you're not you can't you can't be a little pregnant you can't have a little bit of a broken leg your leg either works or it doesn't you know what i mean like so um mild is a word i don't like and I, I see it a lot and i actually have a post there's no such thing as a mild tongue tie or um because it's how it functions so you may have what looks like a tongue tie and you may have mild symptoms but the symptoms aren't what the provider is diagnosing exactly. right you know what symptoms you have do you want to talk about a little yes, bit about the symptoms? Please, let's go into it. Let's talk a little and, bit about what moms should be looking okay. for, what are the symptoms, and especially like yes. young babies. Like, right. for example, when I was digging a little bit into the topic, I saw that maybe gas and some other things could be related to mm -hmm. it. So we'd love to talk a little bit about the symptoms and what yes. to look yes. for. Absolutely. So the first, you know, the biggest red flag that I, I like to point out is if a baby cannot latch from birth or needs to be mm -hmm. supplemented in the first couple of days, 
because of something not not yeah. parents that are separated from each other right you know i mean if the baby has to go to nicu or a special nursery that's one thing but if mom and baby are together and there's some reason why that baby isn't able to latch or isn't getting enough and people you know, the people that are taking care of you are concerned and say, yeah. this baby needs a supplement. You want to say, well, why, right? This baby's supposed to be able to sustain themselves by feeding. So at the breast, right? That's biological. Whether you choose to breastfeed or not, exactly. biologically, that's how we're, we're made, right? We're supposed to feed. So if that doesn't work, something's wrong. And we want to figure out what's causing it. And always consider tongue tie okay. if a baby can't latch. Right. I'm not saying that it's, but it's, it's something to look into reason, if it's something happening. to consider. Okay. Exactly. The other thing you want to think about is the baby that stays on the breast all the time and you can't get that baby yes, off. Or We've all it. either experienced it or heard about somebody who's this baby will not stop nursing, but they never are full. So that's it kid that's going on to the breast and can't really yes you know how he's doing this the nice open mouth instead of doing that they're just going like this they're not getting any milk because they can't because they can't lift their tongue up so it makes and so they much sense like they want to be at the breast all the time because they're hungry because they're not being efficient at extracting right. milk right okay. right exactly um if the baby is getting milk or isn't getting milk and the mom is having pain there's Definitely okay. something to look into there. Pain is never normal. And pain is not just about the mom. That's, that's a uh, misnomer what that I mean want to that? spread everywhere. If a baby, so if the baby is nursing and it hurts the mom, that means that baby isn't officially believe, getting Yeah, up. Because maybe the latch is too shallow, right? Or like maybe it's latching correctly, but it could be right. okay or the position isn't right, or they can't, or they can't. And they're trying so hard to hold on, you know, yes. a lot of times holding the lips in, you know, tongue tie and lip tie are very much associated. I almost never mm -hmm. seen them separate from each other. And a lot of the pain comes from the lip tie because when the baby is, is can't lift their lip up enough, they hold on and the lip is getting sucked in into the that nipple into a place where it shouldn't be. And if there's a tongue tie there too, then it's shallow on the it's nipple pain. and you can exactly. imagine the pain that comes there. Yeah, and quick, usually those are the babies that will cause quick Perfect. like breakdown of the nipple. So some of the signs that we're you know, seeing. So, oh, so sorry, there's any breakdown, right. Any breakdown, any pain, those are definite red flags to have it checked out. Sometimes it's just the way that, you know, maybe nobody showed mom how to help the baby get on properly. It might be something simple like that, but if, if things don't help but also i feel like you mentioned something important. super important like those signs like regardless if you check for tongue tie or not like those are signs that you need to look for help right so maybe it's not tongue tie maybe yeah. it's something else but still things are not going great right. so you've mentioned so far a baby that can't latch right. a baby that wants to eat all the time and wants to be on the breast all the time because they're not latching or pain are there anything else any other symptoms mm -hmm. to look for okay yes yes so um almost very quickly, usually blisters on the lips are a sign because the baby's using their lips to hold on. So that's a sign. Um, as they get a little bit mm -hmm. older, you know, not in the first couple of days, but maybe within the first week or so, okay. colic or gas. You know, colic is a symptom. Yes. Colic actually just means crying. So if a baby's crying all the time, something's going on. And we should check out everything. So tongue tie should be one of those things that are considered. And that goes with gas because gas causes pain, which causes crying. And why does that go with tongue tie? Is because when a baby is latched on the breast in a way that's not efficient and it's not a nice wide open latch and they're not moving their tongue efficiently, they yes. swallow a lot of air. The air has to go somewhere. So sometimes the air comes mm -hmm. up as reflux, which is another symptom, or some, sometimes it gets stuck in the intestines and the baby's got a lot of gas and colic and pain. Sometimes it comes oh. out as explosive <laughs> poops. So a baby who's yes. having, I mean, not to get gross, but I've had some kids in my office where if you were on the other side of the room, you could hear them have a bowel movement. And that's yes. not, not normal. You know, that's not normal. That needs to be investigated. That could be a food intolerance, 
but it also yes, could be time for everything. I totally people. agree. So those are some <laughs> really good, very, yeah, very, uh, yeah. very strong signs that we should check for tongue tie. And just to give a little bit of a summary, it's a baby that can mm -hmm. latch, a baby that wants to be latching all the time when we're seeing pain in mom mm -hmm. because babies mm -hmm. might not be latching correctly. And then like you're saying, like colic, which is a symptom, gas, um, those are all things like kind of like that we can see as signs that we should check. If tongue tie is not it, those are things mm -hmm. that still need to be checked anyway. And you have to be on that path to kind of like figuring out how that can be improved. So I totally agree with that. Right. And I think that is so right. important for every mom to know. And I, I want to talk about something super important here. That is, um, so the procedure to release a tongue tie, right? So um, I saw this question is like, mm -hmm. it says cut. That sounds so like <laughs> extreme, like when they cut it, but it's called a release. Can you tell right. us a little bit about like how the process works? Uh, we got a lot of questions like this was one, but related to the age as far as like, when can it be done? And like, is there a maximum of time? Like if you have a toddler, can it okay. still be done? No. So a lot of things related to age, we have questions, but then tell us a little bit about the procedure if you were to find out that your baby has yeah. a time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'd like to go backwards and say, if you think your baby has a tongue tie, the first yeah. thing to do, or if you're having any symptoms, right? An IBCLC okay. is the person to go to. Don't, don't just go to your pediatrician unless they have an IBCLC, not just a lactation yes. person, an IBCLC, because we have, we're the most educated, we have the most experience, we have, it's, it's a very hard credential to have. If somebody's got an IBCLC, exactly. they should know their stuff, right? <laughs> Let's put it that way. Nothing against other lactation providers, but if you're having this much you have difficulty to go with and nobody's been able to help you, yes. you want to have an IBCLC, right? And because tongue tie treatment doesn't necessarily mean going to someone. Ah, that tell us about that. Least, right? 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 And you don't ever want to go straight to get the tongue tie released because maybe there's something that that IBCLC can do for you to show you that, you know what? It's not a tongue tie, it's this. Or it might be a tongue tie, but it's also because the baby's got some tightness in their neck or having trouble moving their head and that's pulling their tongue back. We wanna get a full assessment of what's going on. Sometimes it's mom's milk supply. One of the symptoms that we didn't talk about is clicking, right? So. Sometimes moms yes. get a very fast letdown or an oversupply of milk, and the baby will click because of that. Now, okay. sometimes clicking is a t sign of tongue tie, but maybe it's not. We never want to have an unnecessary procedure, and also we always want to have that procedure with guidance from an IBCLC who understands to know when that baby is ready for it. There's exercises to do ahead of time. There's making sure milk supply is adequate, making sure the parents are ready for the procedure, because it could be a little bit traumatic to yes. you know, hand your baby over and say, do this to my baby, right? So um, that being said, mm -hmm. the actual procedure done by the right provider okay. is very quick and easy. And I, I like to, I particularly prefer a laser to do this procedure. There are some doctors doctors that are very skilled with using a scissor okay. or a scalpel but i just in my own experience i so refer it's, to a dentist not that this is maybe a I really can. like dumb question okay. but it's not the pediatrician that does the release it's there's an no actual, dumb question. like okay no not usually there okay. are some pediatricians who are trained in this but i wouldn't here's what i would do or i wouldn't do if someone says to me oh i can do that I would say, well, every day? Yes, exactly. do you do that every day? Or is it something that you could do? I mean, I could, if, if somebody fell and got stitches, exactly. I, I know how to do stitches, but I would bring my kids to the ER to get them stitched. Could I, am I trained in it? Am I licensed in stitches? Absolutely. Yeah. But I wouldn't do it. Could I do it in an emergency? Yes. But you want your baby to be in the hands of the person yes. that's expert, if possible. Now, I know there are probably people listening to us from all over the world. And the care, it's not even in every place in the United States, is the same. But there, it's increasing. You want to look for a laser dentist. 
Um, and IBCLC usually will know who those dentists are. And um, if, if anybody, you know, the other thing to link to is my, um, my Facebook group is a very well moderated worldwide group of parents. It's breastfeeding tongue tied babies. So if anybody is ever looking for like a provider somewhere else, they can ask and people and probably have already know. used the provider. So that's a great resource. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. So, um, yeah. And then the actual procedure, you know, the dentist that I referred to that, you know, I network with, he's like, he says, I have the easy part. I have them for a few minutes. You're, t you're taking yes. care of them before and after. You know, so the actual procedure is it when done in the right hands, when done by a laser, literally can take 30 seconds. And what can you That's expect it. after? And then after, yeah, afterwards, you probably, in most cases, will have a cranky baby. Many, in many cases, the baby's cranky from your tension about it, because yes. I don't know any parent that goes into this without any anxiety about it, right? Um, the, usually there'll be okay. like a numbing medication used. So they're a little bit numb. So that could either keep the pain away or make it hard for them to feed. And every baby is different. And depending on the age, it will be a little different. Um, but okay. they should nurse right away. But I always suggest the parents have an alternative method of feeding ready ahead of time. That's where the your feeding specialist or the IBCLC have you comes prepared. in because you want exactly. to talk to them ahead of time, right? And see what, what we do. Maybe you need to pump a couple of bottles just in case. Maybe a spoon feeding that baby who won't Whatever. even take a bottle maybe. that night. Or maybe, or maybe they like to want to be prepared. And everything's great, right? Exactly, exactly. And I always suggest that families do this at a time when they have nothing going on for a couple of days, so they don't feel pressured to be in their normal routine. I have, I mean, two boys. I don't know. You have children yourself. You have two boys. So, so you know, when your kids are sick and you wish you it becomes more anything else stressful to take for care everybody. Of them. But this book the time for it, right. they're able to be fully right. there and not feel overstressed by other reasons. Exactly. In addition to the stress exactly. that you have from an unhappy baby. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. And Lisa, quick exactly. question. And um, so, from the question yeah. that we have here, like. What age can this procedure, like this procedure, like does it have like a minimum age, a maximum age? It doesn't no. have an age limit. I, I have mine done when I was over 50. There is no limit. This is, you know, there, but it's a different type of okay. procedure depending on the age. So a newborn is the simple procedure we're talking about. Toddlers gets a little bit more complicated because after the procedure, you now the tongue is free, it's not necessarily all fixed. This isn't always like, okay, now the tongue's fixed and everything's good. We have to exactly. teach that tongue to work again. And that means different things at different life stages. So if a kid has been sucking a certain way for say 11 months, and now their tongue is sore and they have to learn to use it again, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to do exercises to get that, their tongue moving even to do the stretches that are required after the procedure, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. You know, they got teeth in their mouth and everything. So every age has its own challenges, but there's no limit. Um, I like to, I don't like to rush into it in the newborn it's stage really unless okay. the baby can't latch at all. But, but I'd like, because I, and also as a midwife, I'm very familiar with the stress of post, the new postpartum period, and you want to get everything settled. You want to be in your, as a parent, in the best state of mind that you can be, and making sure you're making an informed decision. You don't ever want to feel rushed. In <laughs> Thank you. No. Thank you. Sorry, Bless Lisa, you. here I want to um, tell that's actually live right now with us was saying like what to do with a one year old that has feeding and speech issues from tongue tie. Mm hmm. So I would suggest finding a good speech language pathologist that okay. has training in oral motor um, and, um, hope, you know, possibly has um, a background in oral okay. myofunctional therapy, right? Which you, myofunctional therapy is something that's done with older kids who can actually move their tongue themselves. 
but if if you're looking for someone that will understand how to guide you I love that That's and i think like that brings me right? to kind of like a really important so. question is if the baby's young like we've talked about like hey like your person to go to is an ibclc she's gonna be the right mm -hmm. person to guide you but if you yes. get into like the older like maybe toddler stage and maybe a little later on stage what other experts could help you with kind of like diagnosing it and then kind of like giving you a path yeah. on like what to do Right. So it depends. I mean, you're, I like to talk about the team approach and your entrance to the team can come at every different places. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a body worker, like a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, okay. an osteopath, um, people who practice cranial sacral therapy, they're all on the team. Sometimes it's a feeding therapist. Now, as an IBCLC, we're trained in bottle feeding as well, but there's certain aspects exactly. of that that are above what I know. So I may get a baby that I'll say, you know what, even though this baby is my age and he's bottle feeding and I know about bottle feeding, all the tricks that I know aren't working with this kid. He needs okay. a speech language pathologist, right? So it's, it's finding a team, finding the right people that know other people. So most of us in this work exactly. aren't trying to hog the patients. We're trying to say to the family, yes, I know you came to me, but this person would be the best. And I think that, you know, when I train people in my professional course, I train all team members and we learn about how to refer to each other and when it's important to refer to each other. When we know our scope of practice, we know what's better. So, you know, there's a lot of times that I'm referring out you know, don't go get your tongue tied. First go do this and then go do this and then come back to me and we'll see how feeding's going. Make sure we're ready and then go get the tongue tie released. And that's the time when you have the best. And you have a plan, exactly. The ready. And I wanted to bring in this question that came from the exactly. stories because we're talking about it. But for somebody that has like, as a mom, like I can relate, right? When I had my first one specifically, like I was just so anxious. I wanted to, mm -hmm. I wanted a million mm -hmm. different opinions, right? Because I wanted to make the right decision. I was so stressed about right. making the right decision. Right. So when somebody kind of like this of mom course. that is saying here, it's like, which professional gives a more reliable diagnosis? We saw five different doctors, all different answers. What would you do? Like, like is that kind of like the IBCLC again, or if two IBCLCs mm -hmm. give you as a mom kind of like two different advice, like, do we go back to kind of like what we started talking in the beginning where it's like, okay, like explain to me what function of the tongue is not working and why, like, okay, like maybe, right, some, yes, right. we know the baby has a tongue tie, but like how is their function impaired to you as a person, as a mom can make the right decision right. or how would you navigate when people are giving you different advice? I would say the most important thing to listen to mm -hmm. is your own instinct. So if you feel that your baby has a problem and no one else is recognizing it or one doctor is and one isn't, yes, follow your instincts. Know. Go, with, go with the provider who seems to be listening to you the best and understanding what you're saying and feels best to you, right? Don't be afraid to follow your instinct. And that's something that, you know, I say, I do a lot of different work in my practice. I've been doing this for a lot of years. And I've seen mother's instincts been taken away from them over the years. And if I do nothing else but empower women and moms to follow their instincts, both with their own health and with the babies, then I've done my job. Because mom We always best. know. Yes. You know best. You know or at something. least have a feeling mm -hmm. towards something. You know when something's right. Right. Or if, or if somebody says to you, I want to do this thing to your baby and it doesn't feel right, yes. then don't, right? Then don't. You're in charge of your baby. Take control of your baby. It's almost never an emergency. There's almost never any time, um, not enough time to stop and think about it. Reach out to mommy groups. You know, I there's a lot of craziness on social, but there's also a lot of good support. Um, and there's also usually a local breastfeeding group that you can reach out to and get information about the people in your area, you know. And I would say get support. Take the time. Um, you know, I diagnose. I, you know, as an IBCLC, we're not supposed to diagnose t technically. But I'm, I can because I have a license as a midwife. 
I'll diagnose a baby, but I'll never tell a family that they have to have a procedure. I'll tell them, their, I educate them, right? And say, this is the information, read about it, look at it, consider your baby, and do what feels right for you. Because there's no exactly. right or wrong in this, especially in a field that's so new. And it, the field is exactly. new, the problem isn't. Lisa, do you, you have know, time for so, one more question? Yeah. We have so many, but uh, I think yes. this one, you already mentioned a little <laughs> bit about it, but I think this one people might have questions on. Um, vocal ties, are they as important as tongue or lip ties? Okay. okay. That's that's another like hot topic. And um, I actually got <laughs> into it with somebody who made a post about it. Sometimes I, sometimes I do silly things on, on Instagram. And where she was saying, there's no research about vocal ties. There's no research about buckle ties, but research and experience, experience is also very important. And what I usually do is I'll suggest to the, to the mom that there might be buckle ties. If we're going to do the procedures, usually we'll start with not, unless it's very severe. If the baby can't open their mouth and there's so much tightness here, yes. it's obviously affecting them, right? But first, some body work, some infant massage, things mm -hmm. to get things loosened up to see if that doesn't work. If they have the tongue and lip tie done and the baby still is having problems and everything else is taken care of and they've had body work and the only, and you see the buckle tie is still causing tension, then it's okay. a no brainer to have it released. But that being said, mm -hmm. again, we don't know for sure if it makes a difference, but about those those little ties on the side they're the easiest to okay. get like to heal from they almost never i in my experience in the dentist that i use i've almost never seen reattachment there it's not that big of a deal yes. compared to everything else and every procedure is a big deal but it's really not it's not as it's not as difficult to deal with as the one the wound under the tongue so if it might be causing a problem, there's really nothing that's going to happen if you release that very gently. Okay, perfect. Lisa, this has been so helpful. Right. I think it has been so I helpful. We have Thank probably you. 30 questions more that we didn't get to answer. But this... <laughs> well, if anybody wants to come over, you know what? Do you mind me saying, I, you know, in the Tongue Tie Experts podcast, yes. my next podcast, which is going to be in a couple of weeks, I want to answer questions. Yes. So I'm going to make a post with ask me a question and I'm going to save them and then come on the podcast That's and answer, perfect. do like a Q and A. So if anybody wants to send me questions, they're welcome to. Yeah, I love it. Be and then on the what's the best way for people right. to get in touch with you? Is it an Instagram DM? Is it through what's the best? Right now, Instagram DM, um, my email is Lisa perfect. At Lisa and then what was the name again of your Facebook group in case they didn't no. hear it so they can look for it? It's yeah, it's breastfeeding tongue tied babies. Lisa, thank you. All right, and the and the podcast mm -hmm. is tongue tie experts podcast, and that's on like every platform. And if you really like, if you if your people who follow you really want to help out and really want to get the word out about this. If they follow it or subscribe to it, it helps me get to more people. Yes. It's so hard to get, you know, there's so many podcasts. It's so hard to get noticed, but um, that's the way to get noticed. So if they want to follow it. And me, we're going to share some of your episodes on the email as well. And thank you so much for your time. I learned so much. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.